Do you guys know that in CAP? Huh? So fast already? Don't worry, we'll help them succeed in the EE applications. Hi, I'm Nitro and I'm from Aerospace Engineering. I'm Genevieve, I'm from Electrical Engineering. Hi, I'm Rebecca from Biomedical Engineering. I'm Isaac, I'm from Automation and Mechatronic Systems. And we are from Nia Poly! Is your diploma course in demand? Right, so for Automation and Mechatronic Systems, right, my course is quite broadened to a lot of industries right now in Singapore. Um, let's say, like for example, maybe the aerospace industry, electrical industry, and even the medical uh, industry. So for us as automation students, we mainly focus on things like robotics and autonomous vehicles. So let's say your, if let's say you are in a lab, um, there will be a possibility of robotic arms trying to sort out medications. Whereas for autonomous vehicles, we do focus on um, driver's vehicles as well. Yeah. So right now, Singapore has been shifting its focus to more of a um, human humanless industry um, in where we are right now. Talking about Singapore's future, I think with the new up and coming green plan, twenty thirty green plan, as Singapore aims towards a uh, carbon net zero carbon emissions, uh, I think electrical engineers actually play a very big role in this sector as we are actually finding different ways where Singapore can convert to clean energy and what we're mainly focusing on right now is solar energy, of course. Yeah, so electrical engineers actually play a very big role. Right. Imagine like a project where you have to use a lot of electrical power. Right. Yeah, it would be better to use right. energy. Yeah. Mm, and I feel like right now also during the COVID-19 pandemic, there's been like a greater need for biomedical engineers because they have the best knowledge to maintain, source and repair um, biomedical equipment. And as a result, they also help to play a part in reducing the fatalities from COVID-19. Right. Mm, yeah. Similarly for aerospace engineering, because uh, vaccine is needed like, all around the world, and also like cargo needs to be transported. So air travel is really important for that. And that's why aerospace engineering is definitely in demand. What are some interview questions you experienced during EAE? Um, I think for my case, I wouldn't really see it as an interview. For me, it was more of an informal chat with um, two interviewers and interviewing about three or four students. And some questions that they asked include why do you want to join biomedical engineering? Yeah. And um, what sets you apart from the other applicants or why should we choose you? Mm. And actually before the informal chat session, there was an engineering assessment activity which required us to work as a team and it tested our critical thinking, problem solving and creativity. Mm. We had attitude tests, you are not right. I had attitude tests for yeah, it was actually one and a half hour long. Yeah, but coming in as like a student who has very bare minimum, who has a very bare minimum of knowledge uh, in engineering, right, I was quite stunned. Yeah, but nevertheless, I was um, successful when it came to the interview. So one of the, one of the questions that was asked during the interview was, um, how could you um, provide for this course if, let's say, we choose you? So at the same time, I was quite stunned because I didn't have that question before, asked before. Yeah, but nevertheless, um, as I was Going through the interview, I was talking to them about my experiences and all. So for my interviewers, they wanted to know about my past experiences and backgrounds. So through that, I was able to share it to them. As for me, my experience with the interview was actually, they asked me a lot of questions with relevance to my thousand character write-up. Mm -hmm. So they, I, in my thousand character write-up, I actually brought up a lot of leadership. So they told me to actually reiterate that point and elaborate a bit more on like what I've done for my school and all that. So my questions were mainly on leadership since actually my school did not offer a lot of engineering based type of like stuff. What are your EAE interview tips? I think one important factor definitely that the interviewers want to see is your confidence and your knowledge of the course that you applied for. Yeah, because for me, right, um, the first thing that they asked me was, okay, so what do you know about automation and mechatronic system? So for me, coming as an IT student, I gave them what I learned during my IT years as an automation student, what I did during my internship years. So with this knowledge, right, this gave me like a boost in so-called acting my interviews. Yeah, so knowledge of your course and also the confidence that you have that portrays out your interviewers, right, is really important. Talking about confidence, right, when you do this type of interviews, you actually have to relax. Because when you don't relax, it makes you seem a bit 
like you're not confident in what you want to answer. So if your shoulders are stiff like this, it makes it seem like you're very rehearsed. Right. So I think you should relax and calm down and answer just answer the questions. Try to treat it like a conversation also. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really nice if let's say you treat the interviewers as like a friend. Mm. I think if you're not confident, because I remember I wasn't very confident when I applied in secondary school. I had never done an interview before. So what I did was I really practiced. I came up with pointers that I wanted to bring up during the interview. Mm. And I just kept practicing in the mirror like on a daily basis. And actually one thing I also do would be I ask my friends and my family to ask me one question a day, like an impromptu question. I'll try my best to answer it. Mm. So that really brought up my public speaking. Yeah, I think talking about preparedness, I also remember preparing very hard for the interview. Like, I would write down the possible questions that interviewers would ask on cue cards. And when I flip them over, I would just write down my responses. And I also feel that um, to ace the interview, it is important to find your own personal story of right. why you want to join the course. Right. For my case, um, the reason why I wanted to join biomedical engineering is because I went to a visit to St. Andrews Hospital in 2017. And during my visit there, I saw many patients who were bedridden and without limbs. Mm -hmm. And upon seeing that, um, my heart was felt with compassion uh, and I wanted to do something for them. And that was where I found my passion for biomedical engineering. Right. So I think the interviewers are looking out for your passion as well, uh, on top of your confidence. Mm -hmm. Be creative yeah. also, try to break the eyes of your interviewers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And you're never actually too prepared for an interview. As many questions as you prepare for yourself, you always have to be ready for questions that you have not practiced for. Right. Right. You just have to be ready and just do your best. Yeah. Just answer the question. Yeah. How do you get through EAE in MPE with write-ups and portfolios? Only three things that you have to prepare before you actually submit your EAE, which is firstly your 600 character write-up, secondly your 1000 character write-up, and then thirdly your portfolio. So character words, not the same thing, please take note. So 600 character, it's actually more about your interest, how you got interested in your course. So for me, I wrote about my interest since young and how it developed through my secondary school years. Right. For my 1000 character, I wrote up all I've done for my secondary school, what I've participated in, what I've planned. And then for my portfolio, I just linked it back to what I wrote in my 1000 character. Mm -hmm. Speaking about writing up, right? Um, for me, I actually wrote up um, about my past experience um, as a leader in robotic skills. So for me, during my secondary school years, I took part in robotic competitions where I was able to lead um, a group of people um, in competition. So thank goodness we won the competition through my leadership. So with that right, um, with that write up, I was able to convince my lecturers, the lecturers that were interviewing me, on my experiences also, my past experiences in robotics, since robotics is pretty similar to automation right now. And also uh, beforehand, um, after my robotics competition, I was um, recommended by my teacher to join an uh, elective module in Yan, which is the same course. Yeah. So through that right, I was able to get a grip on what um, automation has to offer beforehand. And with that knowledge right, I was able to apply it through my interview. Yeah, so that was a really interesting experience. I think for my 600 character write-up, what I wrote was, because I had interest in remote control planes, so since primary school, I, would, I thought about how I would go with my father, and I would like go and fly during the weekends, and I joined the remote control community, so that was something that I felt was unique to uh, only me, so I decided to write that in my 600 character. What I wrote that was about my leadership experience, as well as adding in my volunteering competitions that I did, such as like a design and technology Mm -hmm. Mine was a lot like yours. I just wrote about leadership because I did have a lot of experience mm -hmm. in the engineering sector. Right? I just brought up all my leadership. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think for me, I wrote about something like a specific goal that I wanted to achieve mm -hmm. if I was successful in applying for my course biomedical engineering. So for me, I wrote that if I got into biomedical engineering, I would want to, in the future, design comfortable and affordable prosthetics for those who are both medically and financially challenged. And I think the interviewers are like looking out for interviewees who want to do something meaningful when they um, EAE into their course and something that can benefit society. Yeah. That's true. I think what's comforting for EAE right, is that you necessarily don't need to have a leadership position mm, in order to apply. They would definitely want to see what you have beforehand as an experience um, that really shows yourself out. No, leadership skills could be a plus, but it's not a necessary yeah. uh, position to have. As well as yeah. like engineering things as well. Right. Right. It's your passion that's the most important. Yeah. Right. Show your passion. 
I think one advice I would have is that if you don't have a lot of experience in the past, like secondary school, ITE, what you can talk about is the future. So right. what you're doing in the future. Mm. Right, right, right. That's true. Can all of you show the number of certificates you use to get to the diploma of your choice? Three, two, one. Ta da! Wow, Genevieve, that's a lot. Wow. Eh. But you know what? I'm still the cause of my choice. Yeah. <laughs> When to EAE and how to know if it's successful or not. How you find out that you are actually accepted to each stage is actually through your email, either that or you'll get a message as well. So make sure to constantly check your email and messages. Yeah. Oh yeah, and also I can remember to click accept offer. Right, speaking of email, right, fun fact, uh, I actually know what time the email will come out, the acceptance email will come out, but I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, I was trying to cross the road. So when I was crossing the road, I was very happy. But at the same time, I wasn't <laughs> aware of what's around me. So a car was hit me by then. Uh, so be safe and be and know where you wanna. Yeah. So actually, I'm using my EAE results at in class during form teachers period. Mm -hmm. So actually, during class, I wasn't supposed to use my phone. But in the end, my whole class was waiting for EAE results. So mm -hmm. we all did it kind of secretly. Mm -hmm. So it's quite funny when all of us receive our results and then we, all of us got in. So we we're all very very happy. Uh, I think I had the same experience as you, you know. I just slowly stuck out my phone in front of my teacher because I sat in front of the class. <laughs> and then I checked, and I think I wasn't the only one in class because when everyone checked at the same time, I suddenly saw a few people jump in their seats. <laughs> I think we all found out at the same time. Wow. Uh, any final advice for all the students? So I think it's to always be confident and to never um, be nervous about your interview. Because the interviewer will definitely want to see the confidence in you when you speak out and when you want to share about your knowledge of the course. And like I mentioned just now, is to always have so much really like conversation between you and the lecturer. Yeah, because there will always be a way to break the ice. Um, and when you break the ice, and that's that's that is where you are more comfortable with sharing about your own um, interest and your own passion. Yeah. Mm, so I think confidence is really important. So for me, since uh, I didn't manage to do public speaking. In I in school, I didn't manage to attend interviews. So what I really did was I practiced in front of the mirror. Mm, and I think also like, um, don't be afraid to ask questions of right. interest. Right. So whether it's pertaining to the course that you are applying for or the school that you are studying in, it will be good to uh, ask questions that you are genuinely interested in. And don't be afraid if the application uh, email that you receive uh, comes in like, later than the rest of the other schools because the acceptance of offer uh, it differs from various schools so some schools may receive their application is successful email uh, earlier than the rest of the schools so yeah just don't be anxious of course don't forget to link back to the question <laughs> because sometimes you're so nervous you end up just talking about other things you always have to link back to what the interviewer actually asked you so if they're asking you about how this leadership has like built your character you link it back to that right. ah. if you're talking about engineering how how is it relevant mm. always link back your questions yeah, you can use the side examples too like side back link back to like, yeah. like what you did in secondary school maybe that you that you mentioned like, mm. instead of just talking about the point mm. try to sell yourself thank you for watching our video we hope you learn more about Diplomas EAE. Don't forget to check out our other social media accounts and remember to like, share and subscribe. And we wish you all the best for your EAE applications. Bye! Bye.